Hi, you're here sewing with Cody, and today's video we're working on the Bernina 535. And what we're going to do here, something a little different, is we're going to go through the normal operation of the machine. So we're just going to play with the functionality of the Bernina 535. Because when you first get your Bernina, what you want to do is you want to play with it. And you want to click every button. However, not every button should be clicked. Um, and we may go over, we'll definitely go over that in some of these videos when we're just playing with our 535 and just learning what it does and what it can do and actually seeing it work. Because a lot of my previous videos, I went over like the overview of the machine, its functionality, but we just kind of briefly talked about it. We really didn't stitch anything, we really didn't see anything work. And that's what we're going to do today with the 535. This may, may be a multi-part video because the machines can do so much. So let's get started. So I've got videos on how to thread the machine, how to wind a bobbin, how to put the bobbin in the machine. And those are pretty much the same across the board of the Berninas, the four series, the five series, and even the seven series. All of that's very similar. And the user interface is almost identical with a lot of the Bernina machines. Um, some of the things that are different, we'll try and go over those and touch on some of those. And you'll see that if you've seen some of the other four seven series videos, how some you may not have the functionality uh, with this machine that you see with some of the 7 series and same with the 4 series. And that's because every level has a different, um, different capabilities and what it can do. But we'll go over what the 535 does. So let's get started. So right now, when you first join your machine, this is your home sewing machine. So if you don't have the embroidery module plugged up, this is the machine, this is the screen that you see. And so some of the basic things that we see here are our top thread tension, which changes when we change stitches and when we adjust stitches. And you may see that periodically as we go through the videos. Um, the recommended foot. And here is one of our most uh, important features. And this is if we're ever using a twin needle, we can tell it what size twin needle and it won't allow us to do something that we shouldn't be doing. Also, if we're working with one of the other stitch plates that's available for the machine, we would want to tell the machine that we're working with that specific stitch plate. And then it will prevent us from doing something we shouldn't be doing. And this is all our security settings. And that's all accessed right here. And here is just telling us that our feed dogs are up and ready to start moving the fabric. And here is just a screen that shows us how to insert our bobbin in our bobbin case and how to put it in the machine. There's no bobbin sensor on the 535. You get that with the 500, the 570, and the 590. And of course, many of the other, uh, all the 7 series above that. Uh, with the exception of the 740. So here, our home sewing screen, and these are utility stitches. So these are all the stitches with a purpose. And also, if you notice, there's a little arrow right here. So if we click this little arrow, it will open up this entire screen so it'll allow us to see more stitches at a given moment, which is really nice. It makes it easy for us to um, see those stitches and find them more quickly. And we could do that with any of the stitches. If it's a decorative floral stitch, there's that little arrow and it'll pull it over so it's, it'll allow us to see those stitches. So if we select my little go-to flower stitch, so one thing we remember about the Bernina machines is with this high resolution screen, when we select a stitch, the stitch we see on the screen is to scale. That's the exact size we're gonna see that stitch. So let's start playing with this stitch. So just like any normal sewing machine, when we select a stitch and we start stitching, it's just going to stitch that stitch over and over and over again. Now something as we're stitching, we, can ha we have full control of our speed of the machine. So right now I'm just slightly pressing on the foot pedal, but we can increase the maximum speed, but we can also slow it down. So I like a nice, smooth, medium speed. So I'll have my uh, speed dial somewhere in the middle, in that first third of the, uh, the dial area. And this just gives me a nice, smooth, perfect stitch. I'm not one of those speedy sewers because I find the slower and you go, the more precise your work ends up being. So while we're working with that, we have our pattern in button. So if we look on the screen, you should be able to see 
that we have a little white dot. That little white dot is telling us exactly where we're at in our design, our pattern. So as we stitch, you see that little white dot move around. So just say if we're reaching the end of our fabric and we want to finish that pattern that we're on, that decorative stitch, we want it, we want to finish it, we want to stop it right at the end. We don't really have to worry about the white dot. What we can do is we have our pattern end button. That's this little triangle with the line at the bottom. So if we click this, a little stop sign will appear on the screen. And what that does is the we'll continue pressing on the foot pedal and the machine will stop all by itself. So I'm still pressing on the foot pedal and the machine stopped. And it stopped at the very end of that pattern. So what it did is it allowed me to finish, we'll use our automatic thread cutter. It allowed me to finish that pattern so we have a nice, complete stitch. We didn't finish halfway through a pattern or um, anything that gives us a unfinished look. And that's our pattern end. We also have the pattern begin, which appears on the screen once we started taking a few stitches. A very common thing I get is can this machine, or can any of the machines, which they all can do, can they stop with the needle down or the needle up but most importantly, how do I tell the machine to stop with the needle up or the needle down? That's right here on the screen. So right now we can see that the needle's gonna stop up when we stop. So if we're sewing and we stop, that needle's gonna stop, I'm sorry, the needle's gonna stop down. And that's what we see here with the needle down below that solid line. So if we click it, now our needle will stop up. So when we stopped sewing, the needle stopped all the way in the up position. Now, if you wanted to bring that needle down, you've got two options. You can either press the foot up, foot down button, or with your Bernina foot pedal that comes with this machine, it has a kickback. So you can press on the heel of the foot pedal. Like Usually I use like the ball of my foot. And I'll press on and it'll drop my needle down or it'll bring my needle up. But we can just press this button and it'll drop the needle. Now something else that's nice is so when we do stop, if we press the automatic thread cutter, it will cut the thread and it will always bring that needle up because the machine knows that you're done sewing and that you're most likely gonna be taking it off. So you want, it wants to stop with the needle up. Let's see, so with that stitch, so we're still working with that flower stitch. So one thing I want you to take note is right here in the center of the screen, that same triangle we see here, except it has a line at the top. So what this is, this is our pattern begin. So right now, if we start sewing, it's gonna continue sewing a half stitch pattern. Cause you can see where that little dot is, it's halfway through the pattern, that flower. So if we start sewing, it would start with a half stitch flower, basically in the center. So, but if we click the pattern begin, now the design will start from the very beginning. So when we start stitching, it will start from the beginning of that flower. So we have over here our multifunctional knobs. So the first one, the top one, is our stitch width. So this is how we can make our design narrower or wider. One thing to remember is, so the Berninas have total stitch control, which is a wonderful feature that isn't found in other brands. And what it does is it, it puts you in the driver's seat. It allows you to control your stitches. If you want your stitches to be bigger, smaller, whatever size, it will allow you to change those stitches. Move your needle position, whatever you want, you can do that. Many other brands restrict how uh, restrict your needle movement or restrict how big or how small you can make your designs. The only thing that truly restricts the Bernina's size is how wide you can make it. So like right now, this is a five and a half millimeter stitch with machine, meaning the opening is only five and a half millimeters for your needle to move around in. So many of our designs by default are five and a half millimeters wide. But if we want to make it wider, we really can't because that's the max. Um, but some stitches aren't that wide, so we can bring them up to that five and a half millimeter, but we can always make them smaller. Not all designs will stitch when they're really narrow like this, but it does give you some variability and we can always make our designs longer. So depending on what stitch we're working with, it will really depend on how long we can make our design. 
So this machine, it only allows us to stretch out the pattern. Some of the other machines like the 570 and 590, and we have pattern elongation where we can elongate our stitch and it'll fill in those stitches. So it doesn't just stretch out our pattern, it actually fills in the stitches. So it looks like we made it bigger instead of just stretching it out. But with the 535, all we can really do is just stretch out our design and we can see we can get a little bit bigger. So we can give this pattern a stitch. cut our thread so you can see it. So we can see how much bigger that pattern is. But if you look closely, you can see the stitches are just stretched out. For most applications, that would pretty much work nicely. Some applications may require a little bit of stabilizer because that long stitch length can start to pucker some thinner fabrics. But we can see the default size and we can see our longer stretched out sides. But our multifunctional knobs are called multifunctional because if you're in the embroidery or changing buttonholes or things like that, this is how we can do those things. It's not just stitch width and stitch length. And below this, so let's go to our straight stitch. So below this is our needle position. So the five series have a uh, 11 different needle positions. So that includes the center. So we can move five to the right and five to the left. And what's nice, you see it change on the screen. And if our needle is up, it will physically change. But this, this needle position movement is with every single stitch. And that's part of that Bernina stitch control, where it allows you to control every single stitch, which is really nice. If you're doing a zipper, you'd want to move it over to the right or over to the left. Or if you work with some edge stitching, like an edge stitch foot number 10, we can allow it to move that needle wherever we need to get that beautiful nice narrow edge stitch that consistent professional look and that's foot number 10 stay tuned for those videos um, on the different feet um, another really wonderful feature is so if you if we are working with some of these decorative stitches and we're working on a different type of fabric something we're not really used to we can go to the home button we can go to our little mannequin a little creative consultant, and we can tell it what type of fabric we're working with, and it will guide us to what we may need to change, and it will change a number of things for us. So if you don't know what any of these fabrics are, these are fabric categories, but if you don't know what they are, you can always use a question mark button. The question mark button is your best friend, especially when you're learning your machine. You can always hit the question mark button, and the screen will highlight in blue, and a little blue question mark will appear in the center of the screen. It's a one-time use button. So when we click it, like here, this is a category of leather and vinyl. So leather, suede, imitation leather, fake leather, imitation suede, vinyl, sheer fabric, and coated fabrics all fall, fall under this category. So if you're working with that type of fabric, that's the one you'd want to go to. But if you notice, our question mark button went away. So if we clicked on another icon, it's going to take us to the icon. It's not going to tell us about it. So when using the question mark button, we want to click the question mark button and then select our icon each time. It's like this is a double knit jersey. So, oh, that's perfect. That's exactly what I want to work with, for instance. So we can just click on it. And here we have multiple different sewing techniques or sewing options. And this will change depending on what fabric you're working with, because some fabrics, you're never going to do certain applications. So that's not going to be an, uh, an option. So if we hit the question mark button again, it will give you information like this is an overlock stitching. Or like this one is buttonholes. That wasn't obvious. So you can then select, okay, I'm going to do a zipper. So what that does, when we select that zipper, so it's you told the machine the type of fabric and the application. And then it's going to give you some feedback. It's going to tell you the type of needle, the type of thread, the, the stitch, the foot, and then it may require a little bit of stabilizer depending on the fabric and because we're dealing with a knit fabric it could be a little finicky so what we do if we hit the check mark if you notice it changed some stuff for us it adjusted our tension it moved our stitch over it selected the number four zipper foot for us and it elongated our stitch length and that's to make sewing a zipper on knit fabric easier and more precise and just give you a much better outcome. The Creative Consultant is wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. And different machine models that can change some of these things on their own will change some of these things on their own. So for instance, one of the things that, for instance, like the um, the 570, the 590, and their 7 Series, it, it can adjust our pressure foot pressure automatically. So since we're working with the knit, that's something on the side of the machine. There's a dial. 
So we can see here on the side, there's that dial. So that dial allows us to change the pressure foot pressure. So the pressure foot pressure dial is something that you would want to adjust depending on the type of fabric you're working with. So if, for instance, we selected a knit fabric, so a knit fabric is very stretchy. So we would want to dial this pressure foot pressure down quite a bit because we want to reduce that pressure that the feet is applying to the fabric and the feed dogs. Because the more pressure you're applying to a stretchy fabric, the more that fabric's going to stretch as it's being fed to the machine. So you'd want to dial that down a decent amount. And you can kind of play with it and see what really works best. But when working with knit, you would really want to decrease that quite a bit. And that'll help prevent stretching your fabric. Now, one thing to remember, whenever we change anything on the screen, we see the white numbers or the white symbols change to yellow. That means we changed it from the default. So if you want to clear all that, you can just hit the clear button and it'll clear everything back to default, which makes it nice and easy. Other things we have on the screen here on the side, we have our decorative stitches. So these are the stitches that some of them have a use but most of them are just really decorative to really give us more, add more flair to our stitching. So we've got floral designs, we've got cross stitch designs, we've got um, novelty stitches, satin stitches, and heirloom stitches. So if it comes to some of these heirloom stitches, some of these are designed to create entredeau and things like that, but we do have many different stitches in here that we can really play with. You can really get some really neat designs. And so I do encourage you to take some fabric with some stabilizer and stitch out some of these stitches. A lot of our customers will stitch out. So I'm pause right there. So I'm working with just regular cotton weight fabric. And I had my pressure for pressure reduced because we were playing with, we were uh, working with knits or we were talking about knit fabric. So it was greatly reduced. And I'm watching my fabric stitch and it's moving about because there's not enough pressure. So when there's not enough pressure, too much pressure, you'll see your fabric do things it shouldn't do. So if your fabric's shifting around, check your pressure foot pressure and see where it's at and where you were working with it last. So let me bring it back to the fault. And it should help keep our fabric in line a little better. But the 535, all the 5 Series are very smooth machines. But as we see here, one thing I want to point out is so here's what it looks like stitched out. So first of all, here, this is where our pressure for pressure was actually too loose. So see how long this is and see how that's more of a zigzag? But here, this is when we turned our pressure for pressure back to normal. So see how much better it stitches? So that could definitely be the case if the pre it's when the pressure for pressure isn't where it should be for the type of fabric you're working with. These are some of the things you can see happen. So it was just, the fabric was moving too freely underneath the foot as it was trying to stitch. But what we can always do with any of our stitches is we can always change them. So we can always decrease that stitch length to make those stitches tighter or increase them to kind of stretch them out to get a totally different look. So one thing that we use a lot with all of our Bernina machines, if one thing we notice, the machine isn't very cluttered with a lot of buttons and icons, but you know the machine's more capable of just changing the stitch width and stitch length. So if we come to the little I, we're going to find a lot more information in this little window. So we click that lowercase I, that little round button, and it gives us more options. So some of the options are pattern repeat. This is a wonderful feature. Let me actually select a different pattern so you can see it a little better. So we're back to our flower. So the pattern repeat, what that does is it allows us to stitch a set amount of patterns and it will stop when it's done. And it'll count down. So like right now we've got one pattern, so one flower. We can go up to nine. So here we, it'll stitch out three flowers and it'll stop. And once we start stitching, the machine, once it finishes the pattern, will start counting down. So we only have one pattern left and the machine will stop all by itself. So then we'll end up with just three patterns. 
Other things we have here are a vertical and horizontal mirror image. So here we can flip it and have the pattern so with the uh, flat edge to the right opposed to the flat edge or the bottom to the left. And we have a horizontal mirror image. With many designs, you really don't see a change because it is symmetrical. This is our balancing function. This is something you don't have to go to often or hardly at all. This has a lot to do with the, with our fabric, depending on what fabric we're working with, because some fabric stretch just a little bit. I notice sometimes doing some decorative stitches on flannel fabrics, I find I may have to adjust my balancing. So the way this works is it's, it's interesting. So what you have to do is you have to stitch a pattern to know there's a problem. So if we're working with a pattern and the pieces just don't connect like they're supposed to, or if the pattern overlaps in sections that it shouldn't, it means our balancing is off for that particular fabric. So we can adjust and play with it. So what we'll do is we'll go to our little eye, and then we'll go to the little balance, our little weights. So what we can do here is we want to make this picture look how our fabric or how our stitches are looking. So we can use our knobs. Yeah, there we go. So we can use our knobs to change the look of our pattern. Let's see, that one's not really changing too much. Here we go, it's a little better. So here we can see how the patterns are basically overlapping. So if you're experiencing that, then what you want to do is you want to make this picture look how our patterns are stitching out. And sometimes it may take a drastic change. But so here, so right now what it's showing, and it's a little difficult to see or tell, is so what it's showing is there's a huge space between our patterns. And then like going the other direction, it's showing that there's not enough space or there's overlapping. So you need to replicate what our machine is stitching and how the stitch pattern is looking here on the screen. And it will correct that for you. And that's all you have to do is that, and you can start stitching. And it's just for that particular pattern. And some patterns react differently. I'll show you one more thing for this part, and that's our combination mode. This is a wonderful feature. And I've got uh, individual videos showing this, but our combination mode is right here where the plus is. So the plus is how we get into combination mode, and the plus is how we get out of combination mode. So combination mode, what this is, is this allows us to combine different designs. So you can combine any design in a new sequence to create a whole new stitch. So we really see this a lot when we're working with alphabets. So we'll select one of these fonts, and we can, remember, open up that window by using that little arrow. And so I can go, I could do uppercase, I come here and do lowercase, you can kind of scroll through. And you can always go and add a decorative stitch. So say if I just want to do a little flower, just because it's easy. So here, we'll see our pattern. We'll get out of that. So we'll see our pattern here. And the blue part is what we'll stitch first. or And that's what you're working with. A little thread in there. So if we start stitching. So one thing to remember, whenever you're working with a lot of these decorative stitches, you want to make sure you're using the correct foot. So many of these, many of these stitches, a number one foot will work nicely, but we may want to, when we're working with thicker stitches, or especially with a thicker thread, which will create the stitches even thicker, we want to make sure we're using a embroidery classified sewing foot. So, for instance, I do believe the, let me double check, the uh, 535 does come with the number 20 foot. Actually, all the 5 Series sewing machine come with, come with the number 20 foot. So the number 20 foot is the foot that comes with it that you would want to use for applications like this, and especially applications when you're dealing with the satin stitches in the 400 folder. So those feet have the bottom of the foot is 
is raised above our stitches. So we can see that here. This is just a number six foot, another, another version of the number 20. And what it does, it doesn't allow the stitches to get caught on the foot right after it gets created, especially working with more satin stitches and um, a thicker thread. But here we're able to combine our stitches. And what it does in the combination mode, it allows you to combine as pretty much as many stitches as you want. And you can always go and save them to stitch later. And to save your stitches, you'll come to the heart and you'll go to this icon here. So with the manila folder and the arrow going inside, and this is how we stay, save our designs. And there's my design. And all I do is hit the check mark. One thing to remember is when you're saving combined designs, those are designs you created in combi mode. You need to be in combi mode in order to retrieve them. So if we notice here, we have multiple options. We have two options really to retrieve a design. We have this option which is where we retrieve the combination mode. And then we've got our top option is where would we retrieve our normal saved stitches. So I want you to take note when we're no longer in combi mode and we go to retrieve, that second folder is not there. And I've had many people call and they say they're trying to retrieve stitches that they created and they can't find it in their folders that th where they saved them. And that's because they weren't in combi mode. And there we are. When we're in combi mode, we can retrieve those combination stitches. All right, well, that'll be it for this video. Stay tuned for more videos. There's so much to go over, and I don't want to make the video too long. All right, well, enjoy sewing on your new 535, or if you don't have a 535, hopefully this little overview of playing with the machine gives you a better idea of what the 535 is capable of because the 535 may not have some all the features that you really want and one of the other machines may be a better fit or this may have way more features than you want and maybe one of the lower end models will be a much better suit for you. Enjoy and happy sewing.